One of the paramount things here at the town of Barnstable is public safety. And as the summer ramps up and we start to get ready for the crush of tourism that we see every year, with me today, Liz Hartsgrove is going to talk about Bismore Park and that area of traffic and public pedestrians. It's, it's a zoo down there some days. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> so you just recently uh, went in front of town council mm -hmm. um, to get them to understand and appropriate some money to kind of change some traffic patterns down there and maybe the way that people have done things for years. So yeah. let's talk about what is the problem yeah. and then what we're going to do to address it. Yeah, the, it's a good problem. <laughs> Let's right. just be out in front with it. It's a really good problem to be in because we're doing our job of being good partners with Highline and we are um, we're just to be able to accommodate all of these new uses and existing uses that demands of, of traffic and transportation down there. So um, we have you know the ferries. And then we have personal vehicles, we have uh, taxis and Ubers, we, I, which are new this year right. um, or the past couple of years. It's really expanded and had a great impact um, and change of dynamic down there. So we're making accommodations for that. Uh, you know, we have large capacity vehicles, um, the shuttles to take people over to auxiliary lots that are farther outside of the downtown core area, which is what was in the, um, the parking study and, you know, recommendations is that we need to start be dependent upon areas that are outside of the core area. So um, we're making accommodations for that as well. And then um, RTA with the trolley, the complimentary trolley that they have every year. We want to make sure that the public safety is our number one concern. And so when you have all of those modes of transportation all like going for the same little bit of spot of land, you know, we, we need to do something. And, and that's what this proposal is. Okay. And then not to mention pedestrians um, either coming off the boat or, or being down in Bismarck park really not paying attention to what's going on uh, there's just so much movement down there with vehicles and people yeah. so let's talk a little bit about the new traffic patterns let's start with your large capacity uh, uh, vehicles the yeah. trolleys the shuttles and the buses yeah, yeah. those are um, right now they are everyone is trying to actually go maneuver through the lot on the south end of Bismore Park that's abutting the Highline property they all actually because it's an easy in easy out it's not as uh, constricted as the Highline um, lot and so they have out of habit over years and years of accepting that this is the way to do it um, they are using our property go in and out so we have all of these very large vehicles that are um, for passengers that are over like 15 people so when you think of 15 or 50 some people in one single um, vehicle and then you have all those other smaller vehicles and pedestrians. So you have the tour buses, you have the school buses, you have the shuttles and the trolleys. We're actually going to carve out onto Ocean Street a space for them where the passengers can um, load and unload um, onto the sidewalk and then have the um, you know, easy access to get to Highline or whatever other direction that they're planning on going. Right. And this is handicap accessible. It is. And we're going to be establishing actually um, bus stop signs for easy identification of where the, st the buses or the trolleys or shuttles are going to be stopping. And then we also are going to be installing park benches for comfort as well. Right. So let's go down the line here. The Ubers and the Lyfts, which uh, has been good in one way because it's alleviated some parking issues yeah. um, but then has created some of its own issues with standing vehicles yeah they're waiting for people um, to come in so let's talk a little bit about those yeah it's ride share or ride share, as yep. the state calls them TNC's transportation network companies and we have definitely in the last year um, have seen a great deal of increase with the TNC operators and um, and they're there year round actually. I was on my mm -hmm. cell phone back in February after a town council meeting and I noticed five at 11 o'clock at night down there and um, 
So it, it's interesting to see how this is becoming a year-round uh, mode of transportation that is very popular with our residents and guests here. Mm -hmm. So it is something that we need to be looking for to accommodate and make sure that they have an, a nice little niche as well that right. people can easily, pedestrians can walk to or that the, um, that the vehicles can come to the pedestrians. And, and where will they be located? There, we're carving out for taxis, liveries, and the TNC operators as well as personal vehicles that are coming to wait for their passengers to come off the ferry system or even they're coming from like a restaurant or they want to stay at the um, at the shanties for uh, any special event that's occurring down at Bismore Park. They will have a waiting area along Nantucket Street that they can then, um, you know, contact through their cell phone. So it's going to be called a cell waiting area. So mm. yeah. what else do you want people to know about th these new changes? How is this going to be communicated? This, you know, we're creatures of habit. Yes, we are. <laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, there's there's this public awareness that has to happen. I'm sure you've covered that. Yeah, um, well, we're going right to. to. <laughs> so right here at Channel 18, we're going to continue to communicate through you and um, make sure that everybody is aware of the changes as we continue to implement them because it will be in a strategic manner. We're not going to just plop it down in one fell swoop. We right. have to actually do it in system. So, um, and then we're going to be going out to each of the user groups and identify and let them know and, and ask questions and really, and that way we can also make accommodations and changes through the season. If we don't have that communication, ongoing open communication, it's not going to work. So, um, so we've We've included Highline. We're going to be doing training with all of our staff down there as well as incorporating Highline down there with all of the training and also with signage, that kind of stuff that we're going to be really doing a tremendous amount of outreach to people. Right. And uh, even before they get to Ocean Street, um, there'll be some information that, that motorists will be aware of that things are changing. Yeah, so that we are going to be, you know, I don't want them investing and I don't want, I, I don't want to circle around the block. You know, right. when you go to a community, you want to be able to be set up for success. And so it's a nice smooth process and less anxiety and less concern. So um, we're going to be actually placing signage. We're working with engineering and the traffic department of the police and identifying locations so we can place signage, information signage, so people can go down the right roads, the correct roads, and um, be able to get to the places that they need to go safely. Right. And I just want to mention that this is a pilot program, yeah. so, so changes probably are going to be identified. Yes, it is. So this is just phase one. We're going to try it out and get it, you know, and see what works and what doesn't work. You know, I'm very confident that the waiting area is going to be something that's a welcome, um, you know, but we need to make sure that signage is, is identified um, to help mm -hmm. people get to that location if they're going to be walking to meet up with the cell phone waiting area. Um, whether it be a taxi or whatever. So we need to make sure that we're doing it right. So we, again, like I said, we want to set up these businesses, all of them, to, for success. And the pedestrians and the user groups. So I want to make sure that that open communication is welcome. Great. Anything I didn't ask? Well, we have staff down there that are going to be there. So we have Gateway Greeters already established there, but we're going to be increasing the staffing this year. So to make sure that, you know, pedestrians, that's really the big number one. Um, and making sure also the the Harbor Master activity down there is safely operating because we want to make sure that those right. boats are uh, have access to the services that they are in need of or getting the fish loads off or getting the oil onto their boats. Those are things that is in the same core area right. and, and demanding of the space. So we want to make sure that so if we have staff in place that we can direct passengers keep or pedestrians and keep them out of harm's way. And that requires police details, um, extensive amount of help w from the gateway greeters as well as the pros, the parking resource officers and the harbor master's office. So again, as I mentioned with the training, that's going to be part of it. And Highline staff is going to be on their property helping pedestrians get around the the um, the block of, of land there. So yeah. Excellent. Well, it's an exciting summer. It is. I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be so welcome and, and clean for everyone to understand. Thanks so much, Liz. Thank you, Paula.